That Halloween candy swap, is it really a good thing? Is swapping the Halloween candy for something helpful better than just eating the Halloween candy at all? I know I promised my next video would give you some tips about navigating food through the holiday season. And technically, although I'm not giving you those little questions that I'm going to in the next video, I'm sorry, this will still be helpful. If you're new here, well, I am too. My name is Tanya, so welcome. I like to talk about things that help you feel good about food, about your body, about your health in menopause. So if you wanna talk about these things too, subscribe to my channel and let's hang out. In this video, I wanted to share four reasons why swapping the Halloween candy, ditching the Halloween candy may not be a good thing for you or any kids in your life. And by the end of this video, I'm going to share some options if you're thinking of throwing away the Halloween candy or you're worried that your kids or yourself is gonna eat too much sugar and maybe your grandkids, you're worried about your grandkids too. Technically, this is a channel for menopause, so y'all may have grandchildren. So I get you, maybe you're a health conscious mom, maybe you're a health conscious grandma and you are worried about all of the sugar that might come flooding in through your home tonight. Cause I happen to be filming this on Halloween. After Halloween, the Christmas season comes rushing in and it feels like a non-stop consumption of goodies. Now, maybe you're worried about the sugar because you or maybe your grandkids, your own kids have cavities and seeing so many cavities as a dental hygienist, I can totally get that. I do wanna tell you that this is not the only thing that contributes to cavities, but yes, sugar does contribute to cavities. Maybe the thought of restricting all that Halloween candy for yourself or for kids in your life is because you don't want to see these children struggle with weight or body issues. Maybe they're already struggling and you think you're trying to help them. This can actually backfire. This is what I used to do and it backfired on me. And I'll share more of that, but first I want to tell you, after seeing a few things on social media, I thought they weren't so great for our food relationship or our kids. So here I am. So the one thing I saw was that some people have a Halloween fairy swoop in and take the candy away overnight and it's all gone. Now other people let their kids have a couple of pieces after Halloween night is over. That night they brush their teeth, they go to bed and that's it for the Halloween candy. And others will swap that commercial Halloween candy for a homemade treat with something like honey or dates and no dye. And some of you might be making that Halloween candy consumption conditional on eating your dinner, finishing your vegetables and all that stuff. Now, have you done one or all of these? If so, I'd love to hear, put it in the comments. I was not that creative. I just harped and nagged on how much sugar <laughs> my daughter might be eating through Halloween. So whether I wasn't creative or I also thought that I just felt like I was wasting somebody else's dollar when I threw it in the garbage, I did a few things to mitigate the sugar consumption while I still nagged about it. Do we really need to throw all that stuff away? When you think about social media and sugar, both of them are not good for us, yet we're not gonna throw the cell phone away. And if you delete the TikTok and the Snapchat app and the Instagram, which I should do for myself someday, <laughs> I don't wanna throw away my cell phone, your kids and yourself are gonna ultimately be lured back to Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, and all of it. They find a way to do it. So if the Halloween fairy is coming tonight to swoop that candy away, consider these five things. Number one, taking away food triggers the mind to want more. So whether it's being on a diet or being in solitary confinement or having your mother take away your Smarties or your M&Ms from Halloween, you just want more and then you get resentful. When you can't have something, it becomes all that more sweeter in your mind. Deprivation breeds want. Okay, I'm not proud of this, but I did this to my own child and she would go to the neighbors and she would look for sugar. She actually would ask the neighbor to open up the sugar cupboard and she did it like this. Can I have some sugar? She would have hand signals for sugar. That's what deprivation did to my kid. And this type of behavior is actually evidenced in a research journal called Appetite, which is a multidisciplinary research journal about eating and drinking. How cool is that? And I have the research study right here. Parents' use of restrictive feeding practices is counterproductive, increasing children's intake of restricted foods and risk for excessive weight gain. So the restriction could increase the risk of weight gain. Have we heard that before? Basically, the article said that the more that the parents restricted something, the more the kids wanted it. 
Okay, number two, if you're letting your kids have a few pieces of the candy and you're telling them what to eat, we're missing a learning opportunity. Just like you might be doing for yourself if you're allowing yourself to have two pieces of whatever it is, yet you leave that whatever it is and you crave, 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 you're missing a learning opportunity to tune in to why you want this in the first place and an opportunity to self-regulate. Children and adults go through processes of self-regulation when it comes to eating and other things that we do in life. It's an important part of development and you can still develop this as an adult. Number three, while you may be teaching nutrition to your children, you're actually tweaking their food relationship in a negative direction. So if you think back on your own food relationship where foods are bad, bad for you, you shouldn't eat them because you might gain weight or this, 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 and this, where did those messages come from? Ask yourself if this came from an adult in your life that was obsessed with food and their bodies or your body. Maybe someone regulated your consumption because of their own perceptions about health. We all have different perceptions about health. And when you think back on this, did it make you want more? And even now, does it make you want more? Number four, if you wanna regulate sugar because of your attention span or your kid's attention span, that I get. I had two ADD, ADHD kids in my household and yeah, that attention span issue thing can wear you out. I also have attention span issues. So I learned a lot from these two kids and I can see these things show up in myself. When we talk about scientific evidence for ADD, ADHD and sleep and behavior issues, it's not clear cut. All right, so what can you do if you're not gonna throw out the Halloween candy, but you are concerned about sugar consumption for yourself or someone in your family? Number one, just don't make it taboo. When we restrict food, we not only miss a learning opportunity to understand why we want the food in the first place, but we also increase the feeling of deprivation and then you want the thing all that more. Number two, when you have candy, when someone in your family has candy, can you pair it with another food? Having candy with lunch or dinner, which sounds kind of crazy, actually helps your oral cavity because you're not having a complete acid attack on the tooth enamel. You can enjoy your candy, but the fat and the protein and the fiber in other foods will mitigate that acid attack on your teeth. It actually helps change the pH of the mouth. Number three is the same tip as number two, but for a different reason. When you make candy part of the everyday life, as part of your meal, as just part of eating in general, you take away number one, which is the taboo about candy in the first place. Now, when I ask, what would it look like if you had candy out all the time, most of us <laughs> would wanna say, oh my gosh, I wouldn't stop eating the chocolate. But most of us probably would. And I say most of us because all of the above scenarios that I've described are generalizations. I am not a doctor. I am not a dietitian. I am a mom who's a nutritionist and a dental hygienist who's had this experience in her life and I'm sharing it with you. Every person, every child, every family is different in what it values and what it has going on under their roof. And there definitely may be reasons in certain cases to limit sugar and to look at what dyes are doing to people in our family and to ourselves. But the overall blanket statement of Halloween candy is bad and we need to swap it with the Halloween fairy or we need to just throw it in the garbage or not have it can wreak havoc on the relationship that you already have with food and that relationship with food that the children in your life have. They inherit enough baggage from us already. So when you put whatever candy it is that you like on your plate with your protein, your fat, and your fiber, not only are you helping your oral health, you're actually normalizing candy. I know I said it, normalizing, but this can help your food relationship. You may find that if you do this on a regular basis, that candy doesn't take such a big space in your mind as a must have thing. Everybody's food relationship is different. A video like this is here to help you explore that. Navigating food when you're in menopause and when you have children in your life can bring up a lot of conflict. And all of this can be brought back to tuning into your own individual experience what you're thinking when it comes to food, how you think about food, is it negative, is it positive? How do you look at food yourself and are you passing that down to the children in your life? So whether you choose to ditch the Halloween candy or not, it can be a symptom of the bigger picture of your food relationship when you start to peel away the layers of how you look at things like chocolate and Skittles. Some things are better for us than others. There's fun food in life and there's functional food and most of us can enjoy both. 
One way to look at food like Halloween candy is that it's fun food and then there's functional food that supports body processes. Sometimes fun food is supporting our emotional well-being. And I wish when I look back on my kids' experience that I taught her about fun food and functional food, but I didn't know all that back then. So there's a lot of things I would do differently. If you liked this video and it was helpful, hang out with me here, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video where we continue to navigate food through the holidays because the gingerbread season is coming up. Bye for now.